Hey, what's up everybody? So, all right, so today I'm gonna be doing um, an unboxing. Now, this uh, unboxing, I've had it for a while. I've had this um, case for a while, and unfortunately I did not, you know, of course, I got other stuff uh, coming in and, you know, prioritiz prioritizing other things. But, uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and uh, show you exactly what this is, and then I'll go ahead and explain why I'm building it now. So nonetheless, let's go ahead and get this open. Okay, so the case that we have here is actually, uh, well, actually it's a chassis, so it's a, a server chassis. So this one is actually the Silverstone RM41-H08. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, unbox this uh, and then I'll explain basically what, what was going on. So first thing we got is of course, we have a uh, documentation right here. Uh, let's see. We have, of course, I guess, setup manual and all that good stuff. We have some cables for some fan connections right here. So we got two of them right here. And we got this little bag right here. So let's go ahead and see what we got. So we have some fan screws. I guess this is for a Slim ODD. Prison, probably a solid state drive, probably, um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what ODD would be. So it's pretty cool. So this actually comes with keys, so you could go ahead and lock it up. We got this little plate. Um, not exactly sure what it is. Uh, I'll go right ahead and basically put a description and down here. So we do have, from the looks of it, some risers and some screws here. This is for most likely the motherboard. We have uh, these four little screws. Uh, this is technically labeled as for power. We have a little SATA power extender right here. Screws for CD-ROM. Uh, technically, I will not be installing any CD-ROM, but you do have the availability of installing one. And some screws for a 3.5 hard drive. So here is the front, of course, of uh, this case. So as you can see, we do have a little hard drive bay for five uh, 3.5 uh, millimeter hard drives. I believe you can also technically set some SSDs here if you so choose. If I remember correctly on the spec, so this will actually do SATA and I believe it's SAS drives, so which is pretty cool. So you can go ahead and do that there. Over here on this side, you can see technically there's not really a bay here, but you can buy it separately and actually get an additional five um, hard drives installed on this chassis. Here, of course, um, nothing special. I mean, it's just an open vent. Uh, you can actually, uh, right now when we get in here, I'll actually show you where you can actually set up um, an actual fan. So in the front, of course, we have uh, status lights uh, for technically, of course, power hard drive and from the looks of it, uh, probably network uh, status drives here. We do have power and a reset button. And then we do have USB 3.0 on this. All right, so now that we've seen the front of it, let's go right ahead and actually open this puppy up. By the way, I forgot to include this, but you can actually um, set up some rails here so you could go right ahead and mount it. Um, I'll go right ahead and include the part number down blue. Okay, so there we go. So now we have uh, this case open. So let's go right ahead and see exactly what we got. So let's start from uh, left to right. So as you can see right here, I don't know if you can see it, but we do have some SATA connectors right here. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five. So that'd be for, of course, the five hard drives that you have there. Uh, powering everything, of course, you could go ahead and connect two SATA cables right here. And then we do have, of course, uh, some indicators that we could go ahead and turn on and off. So right here is actually the hard drive uh, LED. So if you want to go ahead and have that blinking in the front of the case, you can go ahead and do so. You could toggle it on and off. And then the bottom one would be actually the fan. So if you want to go ahead and basically control the fan to go high or low, you could go ahead and adjust it there. All right, so here in the middle, of course, we do have some slots. These you can actually just set up uh, hard drives if you so choose so. We have four slots for 3.5 millimeter hard drives right here. And actually, actually, no, we don't. So we have one, two, three, four. Actually, we have a total of five because underneath here, there's another slot. So you can actually put five um, hard drive or 
five 3.5 millimeter hard drives here. And then for solid states, uh, we do have one down here. So underneath right here. And then another one here that you could go right ahead and put. So if you don't need any adapter or special adapters to connect the uh, solid state drives here, you do have available one right down here and then right over here. Of course, to the, your right, so if you're gonna be installing, um, you know, the DVD or Blu-ray drive, you could go ahead and do that here. If you're, gonna, if you're not gonna be doing that and you wanna set something up like this, this will actually fit in, in the middle right here. And actually, so I forgot, so right here in this area, you can actually set up a fan right there. And from the looks of it, uh, if I remember correctly, like back in the day uh, with some old uh, PCs, you can actually set this up as being a little, um, kind of like a little alarm if somebody, you know, actually opens up the case, it'll go ahead and trigger it. Um, so you do have the option to do that. Uh, I personally will not be doing this. We have some cables for the motherboard. So of course you do have the USB 3.0 right here. And of course you have, of course, everything for reset switch, uh, of course the power and all of the good stuff to go ahead and indicate everything. And of course turn the, the PC on. So we do have that. Looking at it on the other side, so this is, of course, an ATX. It, it will support an ATX motherboard, but of course you could go ahead and put something smaller if you so choose so. It does come with two fans right here. So as you can see, we got them right here. Uh, so now I understand why they included those fan uh, cables because as you can see, these are way too small if let's just say if the header is somewhere over here. So that's why they give you that. I had no idea about that. So cool, so they have that available. And of course, uh, for the power supply, this will support an ATX power supply as well. All right, so that is, of course, the unboxing. Now, why am I doing this now if I've had it for so long and why have I been sitting on it? Well, initially, I thought it was like, well, you know what? It was like once I move out, I'll go ahead and set up the, uh, the server and I'll buy the drives and, you know, da 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 da, go down the list. Well, unfortunately, I didn't have enough funds to go ahead and of course buy the amount of hard drives and the capacity that I wanted because that was going to take up a pretty good chunk of what I need to basically of course pay my bills and all that other stuff. So initially what I was doing was I was using this Raspberry Pi. Now I actually use this Raspberry Pi um, in, in some tutorials, uh, I did some unboxings on it. So this is actually the Pi, uh, what is it, Raspberry Pi 4. This is the Extreme Edition. I believe it's the eight, the eight gig one. Um, so yeah, it's like, it was it was working fine. Now, I went right ahead and installed Open Media Vault on this, you know, of course, on this Raspberry Pi. And it was running okay. It was like, I mean, it wasn't the best. I mean, I, I noticed that it wasn't, you know, as fast as, of course, my other server that I have in my mom's house but it was serving its purpose. It was just basically, of course, if I wanted to watch movies, uh, of course, stream some, you know, music or do some file transfers for, you know, of course, uh, for the YouTube channel, I could go ahead and do that. But then all of a sudden this actually, or I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blame it on the Raspberry Pi, but for some awkward reason, um, or even Open Media Vault, um, I shouldn't even do that. But for some awkward reason, it just stopped working. It wasn't, um, the shared drives weren't picking up. Well, actually, no, that was actually after that. So the initial issues were actually, as soon as I was like, let's say I wanted to stream something or I wanted to do something, I noticed that there was certain buffers whenever I was, let's say, viewing a video or something like that. It would play all right, and then it would buffer, and then it would just basically keep on going. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? At first, I was like, well, it might be something in my network, maybe my switch, because I was having switch issues. Yeah, so uh, at the end, you know, of course, having buffer issues, um, it, that just, you know, it was, it was mildly inconvenient. It wasn't a showstopper. I was like, okay, that's fine. It's like, I'll just basically wait until it picks it up and that's fine. Well, as days progressed, unfortunately, Open Media Vault, at the end, I couldn't even access the share. So I was actually at, at work and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to do something real quick. Let me go ahead and remote into the server and go ahead and you know, do a couple of changes. Well, the shares weren't even available. So at that point I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on? It's like, did, did I lose power? What's going on? It's like, 
these are issues. Um, I finally got home and I realized that, well, oh, the shares weren't working. Everything had power, everything, you know, of course. Um, internet was working, but yeah, so unfortunately the Open Media Vault was not working. And as of right now, I've been without it for several weeks, but of course now I just decided like, well, you know what? I gotta build this server, I gotta go ahead and set this up because of course I need to transfer files from my workstation to the server to keep on going and you know of course not filling up my local uh, computer and actually store some of the files or edited files that I have to a switch, to a server I should say. So the plan for this build is gonna be this. I have an old FX build that was my, used to be my main uh, computer setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that up. Now, like I said, I don't have enough money for the hard drives, but I do have, a, what is it, a, an external hard drive that actually runs, um, what is it, it has a 3.0 um, USB cable connected to it. So I'm technically gonna be doing the exact same thing I was doing here, just basically moving it to this um, server right here once it's built. Now I know it's technically, it's gonna be a bottleneck running everything via the 3.0 cable instead of actually setting something up with uh, SATA. So I understand, but this is just temporarily just so I could go ahead and get everything running. Eventually, once I do get enough funds to go ahead and you know, actually buy the drives that I want, and actually basically start a raid on this. I'll go ahead and do that, but as of, for right now, it's just a temporary fix. Alrighty, everybody, well, <laughs> I know it's a long story from beginning to end, uh, but I really do, um, you know, hope you enjoyed this video and this content. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and most likely be, what I really wanna do is I wanna set up a live stream, me setting this up, so, I might do it maybe this afternoon. Uh, I don't know, maybe tomorrow. I mean, it's a long weekend this week. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see exactly what happens. But nonetheless, thank you very much for watching and we will catch you on the next one.